Closer, we can't see you. There's nothing to be afraid of. But fear itself. In my next career, I'm going to have a voice like that. It's an awful morning for me, you know? <laughs> what happens when it gets up? <laughs> Don't get too close to anything. <laughs> Mr. President, Jerome says he wants to talk to the Russians. How do we feel about that, sir? Any final instructions for the Vice President? Can you do that, Mr. Vice President? Wait! <laughs> <laughs> It's coming. It looks like tracks. <laughs> there are tracks there. <laughs> Not really a Greyhound bus. No, oh, it's not. goodness. Is that very bright? <laughs> I know that Howard and the Senators have got to be back up on the hill for a lunch for Mr. Mubarak. And uh, so, first of all, thank you all for the input that you've had and your thoughts and whether you recognized or not, they were having influence on all of us. I know that some will be unhappy uh, with all or parts of the, of the plan, but I think it's vital that we stand together on this. And uh, uh, some have indicated preference for more defense cuts. Well, I think that, I think we've done what and there's one thing. I've noticed that the Democrats, when they talk about that, they love to use the figure of the outlay. And uh, the figure in the budget is 11.3. And uh, I think that we should, we should point that out and the fact that it's going to be $55 billion over, the, over these next five years. But this program actually re will result in $558 billion in deficit reductions between 84 and 88. And unless we take these actions, the deficits looming in the out years uh, have the potential, I think, to stifle the recovery. I mean, but if we work together on this, I think that we can assure a goal of a sustained economic recovery, which I was happy to see Mr. Volker publicly announced himself. Uh, I didn't get to, to, to see what the audience was he was addressing. The Joint Economic Com Commission, and I went to work on it. And he said that the there is in place now a plan for solid and lasting economic recovery. <laughs>
thinking of all day. She was snapping pictures last night at the Art Institute, at the National Institute of Art over there. And there was one painting that was a large nude. <laughs> and she didn't photograph me looking at it. <laughs> but you were looking at it. <laughs> well, it was art. <laughs> I thank you all very much for coming today. Some of you came all the way across the country and some came from just across the hall. <laughs> but I know you joined me in admiration and deep appreciation for a man who's worked so hard and done so much not only for this administration, but for our country. And Drew, on behalf of all of us, I thank you. Drew and I have had a very special relationship for a long time, as many of you probably know. I think it was summed up the night before the air controller strike. <laughs> Drew was over at the Federal Mediation and Conciliation Service and he got on the phone and said, get me the White House. <laughs> and when the operator came on, he asked for Ed. Ed wasn't there. And so he asked for Jim and Jim wasn't there. And he asked for Mike and Mike was absent. And he went on down the line and finally he asked, well, if maybe the president was there. <laughs> when I came on the line, I'll always remember his words. He said, Mr. President, I'm sorry to disturb you, but I couldn't find anyone. <laughs> and that is the truth. <laughs> so ever since... When I needed some advice about highways or truckers or some information about mass transit, I call his home and ask for Merrill. <laughs> Actually, I've relied on Drew for, truly, for wise counsel and hard-nosed leadership. and never been disappointed. He understands government, business, and politics, and that's quite a combination. But more than that, he understands the American dream, which may be why well, the quality that I'll miss the most. But there are some key areas that stand out. One example is the user fee of financing the new national airspace system. And of course, Drew's work during the air controller strike is legendary. We've also taken strides toward returning Conrail to the private sector. And through passage of the Highway Improvement Program, we've ensured the maintenance of America's highways, bridges, and mass transit systems for years to come. Drew, like your friends and colleagues gathered here today, sorry to see you go. But I knew when I asked for top flight people <clears throat> to join the cabinet, I was asking them to take time out from their own careers to help the country. And I knew you'd have to leave to return to the private sector, but I'd make the same choices again. And Drew, you're, you're kind of a citizen politician that America needs to get government straightened out. And the kind of entrepreneur we need to get the economy moving again. So I feel better already just knowing that you're going out there to stir things up. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll be sorely missed by all of us. I think we're lucky to have such an able person as Elizabeth Dole ready to take over. And I look forward to continuing to work with her in the new role except when I call her house, then I'll, it's the same situation. <laughs> <laughs> you have to ask for Bob. <laughs> but you will be missed, and I thank you for your hard work, your dedication, friendship, and can only say, as everyone else here does, good luck and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And to all my friends who came here today, I also thank you. And you know, there was some speculation that uh, I might be looking for some other job in government, but I talked to the President, and he decided he wanted to stay. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I'm going to go back to the private sector. <laughs> 
<laughs> but seriously, I'd like to pay tribute to the finest person I ever worked for, a tribute to the President of the United States, and I propose a toast to you, Mr. President. <laughs> I really came close to giving you the job, but then I thought about placking up all those plaques.